Um, let me uh, invite our much. next Thank speaker, uh, Dr. Tatiana Kushner. Um, Dr. Kushner is a hepatologist at the ICANN, ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai um, and uh, has really been a, a lead researcher and um, advocate in the space of um, hepatology amongst um, pregnant persons. So thank you, Tatiana, over to you. Thank you so much, Neil. And uh, again, thank you for organizing the session and, and for uh, inviting me to uh, participate. I think it's a very exciting and timely topic, of course. And I will uh, share my slides here. All right. Is everyone able to see? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So I will just uh, have a, a brief uh, kind of overview of what has been our experience in linkage to care, as well as treatment initiation of hepatitis C uh, in pregnant people here at Mount Sinai in New York. So really more back to a US-based uh, perspective. So, you know, we have been thinking about this issue for a while, and in 2017, we actually initially implemented universal hepatitis C screening in obstetrics uh, before even some of the major society guidelines came out. And that's because we felt strongly that, again, as has already been mentioned, pregnancy is really an opportunity where already pregnant people are undergoing so much testing and oftentimes an initial diagnosis is made uh, in the pregnancy context. We've seen that for HIV, we've seen that for hepatitis B uh, and hepatitis C uh, is no different, especially in the setting of known, as we already mentioned, increases in the prevalence of hepatitis C in women of childbearing age. So we implemented universal hepatitis C screening of course, uh, that was only really possible with strong partnership uh, from the OBGYN department. Uh, I myself am a hepatologist, a liver specialist, but I work very closely with an obstetrician, uh, Dr. Rhoda Sperling, and uh, together we were able to uh, develop what we called a woman's liver clinic. So the idea was uh, we implemented screening and then we built this uh, women's liver clinic, which is a clinical practice co-located in the obstetrics department uh, with the goal to really provide care to pregnant and postpartum individuals with a range of uh, liver diseases, including hepatitis C. Uh, and as part of this uh, women's liver clinic, we really wanted to offer uh, education to patients who now will have more uh, uh, quick and uh, straightforward access to uh, liver care and infectious disease care, so patient education, as well as close collaboration uh, with obstetric providers uh, and educational sessions there as well with uh, updates on what we know about hepatitis C now and the other liver diseases, as well as uh, case management and social work in order to ensure that the people that we see in this women's liver clinic will get the treatment that they need and ongoing follow-up. And very importantly, as was already mentioned, uh, linkage to care postpartum. And what we saw is that oftentimes uh, a lot of people were newly diagnosed with chronic liver disease in the context of pregnancy. And as I'll share later in terms of hepatitis C specifically, 61%, so the majority of the people that we saw with uh, hepatitis C in pregnancy were initially diagnosed uh, during pregnancy care. And the idea was to use this co-located practice in order to uh, diagnose, uh, treat, and link to care. And in this context, we began to think about the potential rationale to consider initiation of direct acting antivirals for the treatment of hepatitis C during pregnancy. And when thinking about an intervention in pregnancy, particularly a medication during pregnancy, I think it is a complex decision. And really, uh, we have to consider both sides of what may be the potential benefit and what may 
uh, be reasons to not consider treatment during pregnancy. So potential pros, pot potential reasons for treating during pregnancy is that we can offer maternal cure, hepatitis C cure, while the patient is engaged in pregnancy care. We have a captive audience. We have uh, individuals who are coming to frequent medical appointments already. And so in this context, we can offer treatment while the patient is in front of you. In addition, uh, we thought that offering hepatitis C treatment during pregnancy can have beneficial effects on both maternal and infant health. So the potential to decrease the risk of mother to child tr transmission. We know with uh, hepatitis B and HIV that intervention during pregnancy decreases risk of transmission and we thought the same would apply to hepatitis C. In addition, uh, that this offers an opportunity to offer treatments for hepatitis C while there is insurance coverage. As Dr. Epstein mentioned earlier, uh, some women may lose insurance coverage after pregnancy care and therefore lose the opportunity to have hepatitis C treatment. But now while they're covered, you can offer treatment and also offer the potential to decrease uh, hepatitis C associated adverse pregnancy outcomes. We're learning more and more that there is a strong association of having hepatitis C during pregnancy with adverse pregnancy outcomes, including cholestasis of pregnancy, preterm delivery, and others. So can we eradicate hepatitis C during pregnancy in order to improve the health of the mom and the baby? But the hesitation in treatment, and, and we heard this feedback from uh, others, is that really in order to offer an intervention, you want to have safety, uh, safety data uh, during pregnancy as well as during breastfeeding. And ideally, uh, we would want uh, to have more safety data than what potentially was available at the time. Although the caveat to that is many medications that are used in the context of pregnancy don't have randomized clinical trials and a, a large amount of data to back up their use, but we extrapolate from animal safety data as well as safety outside of the pregnancy context. In addition, uh, some say that perhaps uh, it's okay if there's vertical transmission and you can consider just treating the children later at age three. The challenge with that though, is that as we've seen in several studies that oftentimes these children are also lost to follow up and are not screened for hepatitis C after being exposed uh, during the pregnancy. In addition, uh, the question of uh, the logistical aspect of, of offering treatment in pregnancy, can you access the DAA therapy in time, for example, if prior authorization is needed and other aspects may delay treatment, you may not be able to access it in a timely way. And of course, uh, the question of is it cost effective to treat uh, during this time. And then we also have some expert comments and recommendations about whether treatment should be considered during pregnancy. So the Liver Society and Infectious Disease Society of America, AASLD and IDSA, in their guidance says that despite the lack of a recommendation, treatment can be considered during pregnancy on an individual basis after a patient-physician discussion. So really the guidance leaves it to the patient and the physician to determine together whether to pursue treatment, which is similar to many other medical contexts in pregnancy where really it comes down to joint decision-making. In addition, SMFM, which is a Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, uh, in their guidance suggests that we recommend that DA regimens only be initiated in the setting of a clinical trial during pregnancy. And at that time in 2017, there was not a multicenter clinical trial. Currently, as we may uh, hear more about later, there is a multicenter clinical trial, but that multicenter trial is not available, of course, at all sites and, and healthcare settings. So this also is a bit limiting. In addition, over the years, there has been really more and more discussion of the importance of including women of childbearing age and pregnant individuals in our work towards eradicating hepatitis C. And even that includes including uh, pregnant women in uh, research. So uh, the US federal regulations no longer uh, uh, designate pregnant people as a vulnerable population and suggest that actually it is important to consider the inclusion of pregnant individuals in research if it can offer benefit to them. Uh, and so excluding pregnant individuals and fetuses 
from the opportunity to actually be treated for hepatitis C and potentially improve pregnancy outcomes and decrease vertical transmission actually uh, excludes them from potential health benefits. And therefore there are clear benefits consider initiating hepatitis C treatment uh, during pregnancy and that we should really start being a little bit more forthcoming, open-minded about this uh, patient population when considering offering hepatitis C treatment as well as other medical interventions as well, if they can benefit safely uh, pregnant individuals. Uh, this study uh, was shown uh, previously by Dr. Al Said, but uh, we also surveyed uh, women with hepatitis C uh, and asked them about their opinions. Would you consider uh, hepatitis C treatment during pregnancy? And the majority did say that they would uh, take DAAs if they lowered the risk of vertical transmission. So what we learned from here is that pregnant people care really that uh, the primary concern to many pregnant women is optimizing the outcome in their infant. So if we can demonstrate that we can decrease vertical transmission, transmission, then the majority would be willing to consider uh, treatment uh, during pregnancy. A smaller percentage said that they would be willing to consider treatment during pregnancy for self-cure, even if it did not decrease vertical transmission. So what did we do? We developed a departmental protocol. We met together with obstetrics, hepatology, pediatric, and uh, adult infectious disease, and uh, sat down and developed a protocol to treat uh, patients after having a joint decision-making session where we speak with the patient openly about what we know and what we don't know about uh, DAA treatment in the context of pregnancy. And we began to offer treatment uh, to individuals who were referred to our women's liver clinic uh, during pregnancy. We also enrolled the, the individuals uh, with hepatitis C to our existing uh, care coordination program for all individuals with hepatitis C called uh, the LEAP program in order to get case management, social work, and uh, care navigation services for them. And this was the result of uh, our clinical experience. So we had 23 pregnant women with active hepatitis C who were referred to us for consideration for hepatitis C treatment. Out of 23, 15 did agree to pursue treatment during pregnancy. So again, a majority did agree to treatment. Uh, the ones that did not agree to treatment cited safety concerns. So uh, people wanted to see more safety data. Uh, and there was also just loss to follow up before they even showed up to our uh, appointment. And then out of these 15, we did have some barriers with insurance approval for our uh, for the medication that we wanted to use for treatment, which at initially was sofosbuvir uh, ledipasvir and then sofosbuvir belpatasvir, uh, just because there was slightly more data for these medications. And so due to uh, some of these uh, barriers and, and require for authorization or preferred agents uh, from uh, insurance companies, there was some delay in uh, receiving uh, the treatment during pregnancy. And in the end, uh, we had seven individuals who were treated during pregnancy and eight who were treated in the postpartum period. Of these individuals, uh, 12 patients did complete treatment. And what you see here is that there continues to be drop up, including even among those individuals who completed treatment, only seven actually showed up to the SVR12 visit. And I think this was really a big learning point here that the postpartum period where we, uh, you know, as was already mentioned, is a really uh, important but challenging time to maintain engagement and make sure that we have ongoing follow-up and, uh, and, and uh, adherence to completion of treatment, SVR12, and of course, uh, linkage to further care if needed. So what did we learn from this experience? So one, I agree, as was already mentioned, that pregnancy care really may be the only opportunity to treat, uh, to, to diagnose and treat hepatitis C. Again, the majority of the individuals that we met would not know about their hepatitis C diagnosis if they were not universally screened. And so there really is a benefit of screening and then co-locating care to make sure that after screening occurs, uh, that care can be initiated. 
I think support services, including care navigation and others is really, really needed, particularly in the postpartum period to make sure that treatment completion occurs and linkage to care occurs. Uh, I do think that co-locating in the obstetrics department uh, is really a way to optimize compliance because, again, the patient is there, they're coming to frequent visits, and it's our opportunity to offer treatment. I do uh, feel strongly that it would be beneficial for patients and providers to feel comfortable with hepatitis C treatment to have more safety and efficacy data and more research on the topic. Uh, and also insurance uh, barriers uh, can delay treatment. So as was already mentioned, improved insurance coverage. And again, uh, programs dedicated really to this population, to hepatitis C and pregnant people, again, particularly and especially during the postpartum period to maintain engagement and uh, make sure treatment is completed and SVR 12 visit is uh, completed as well. I will end there. Thank you so much.